It's that time of the year again. This is probably the worst time of the year for me. It is a time of just provocation. A time of just pure hypocrisy. A time where everyone is out provoking the Most High and worshipping a God that they actually say they hate. Everyone says that they hate Satan and they don't respect the sellout devil worshippers. But yet the majority of people around the world are putting up trees, decorating their houses, singing songs, and putting on church theatrics, all in the worship of the reborn sun god Tammuz, who in Egypt was Horus, who in Persia was Mithras, in Greek was Adonis, in Rome was Apollo, until Rome hijacked and took authority over the faith of the Hebrews and used the Latin Aesis as the name of the savior of the Jews, who later in our English language is called Jesus. Just to quickly summarize the confusion, it's all the same God, just in different names. Pagan faiths rebranded and repackaged for modern times. You know, there's a well-known statement today that says that the devil is in the details. That statement is actually an important one and it should not be taken lightly because you will find that with this subject of Christmas, as well as many other subjects, this statement of the devil being in the details very much applies. You know, today we can give the rebellious people who have truly rejected Messiah and just choose to celebrate this day because of Santa and all the other ridiculousness that comes along with it. We can give them a sort of pass and just ignore them because they don't believe altogether. So their celebration of this holiday, it goes without saying, obviously. But in 2023, the time of social media and massive information being spread, for the amount of people who actually claim faith in Messiah, we can at this time with much assurance call these people who sit in these churches and call themselves believers, they are clearly hypocrites. They don't want to know. There has been too much information spread over the years for people to act like they don't know that there might be something wrong with Christmas. They don't want to know. It's a safe bet to say that most people, not all obviously, but most people have at least heard a challenging view to the celebration of Christmas and they have chosen to ignore it. They don't want to even consider it. And they continue on with their false worship because whether they admit it or not, Christmas is more about themselves than it ever is about their claim that they are worshiping the birth of our Messiah. I mean, let's be clear. We know that there is no record in scripture or any historical evidence that gives us the date of the birth of our Messiah. We know that there is no mention in the scriptures at all of any time that anyone in the Bible celebrated Christmas. We know that there is no mention in the scriptures of Christmas trees being used in our worship except a reference to a similar pagan practice in Jeremiah chapter 10. We know that they falsely use the excuse of giving gifts during Christmas because the wise men brought gifts to the Messiah. But how they have twisted it to be themselves, actually giving gifts to anyone that they want to, it makes no sense if we're taking it biblically. None of it makes sense. The truth is that the celebration of Christmas is a satanic holiday worshiping the reborn sun god from pagan beliefs that have always been against the faith of those who believe in the Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This time period that we're in right now is one of the most wicked times of the year because an overwhelming majority of the world, except for the Orthodox Church, who's just waiting a few more weeks to celebrate their pagan day, or the practices of Islam, with even some of them, I've met many who say that they celebrate Christmas. You see celebrations of Christmas in Egypt. And also, Jehovah Witnesses who have their own wicked doctrine dwelled amongst them. But other than them, most other people in this world celebrate this wicked day. As a whole, this holiday is the only time of the year where everyone celebrates regardless of their religious faith or lack of it. They all celebrate Christmas. This time is a time of unity in the world, all despite religious divides because surprise, surprise. everyone is worshiping the same God just by different names. The anagram of Santa actually tells the full story. Anyways, I hate this time of year because of the rebellion and provocation. Everyone just assumes you celebrate this day. But funny, everyone doesn't normally just assume that you believe in Jesus. So there is an extreme amount of hypocrisy. Now, I'm very happy to see just how many people have commented over the years and have said that this will be their first year not celebrating. By now, for many of you, it's probably gotten a lot easier to just leave it alone, right? And for many of you that this is your first year, I want to say I'm proud of you. Not just for not celebrating Christmas, but for what it actually is that you're doing. 
putting down idols and making Yahuwah, the Most High, the priority in your life. You chose not to put yourself first, your feelings of comfort, your own feelings of getting along with everyone that would disagree with your decision not to celebrate, your own feelings of nostalgia and Christmas memories. So many different things you've put aside on this day and time because you chose Yah and said you love him more, you want to serve him more and not be a part of wickedness. And that truly is a huge decision that most people just do not do as you can clearly see. You will find so many people in these comments making a bunch of posts justifying their reasons for celebrating this pagan holiday. There are many different excuses people like to use in order to justify this holiday. The main one which you hear the most often is very irritating when you hear it. It's Colossians chapter 2 verse 16. It says, So let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or new moon or Sabbath. When this scripture is used in justification of Christmas, it can be quite irritating because it is an example of isolating scriptures and not placing it into full context. When people use this scripture, always ask them, does this mean that I can celebrate Ramadan, an Islamic festival, and tie it to Messiah, and no one should judge me? It always exposes the hypocrisy. They say, don't let anybody judge you on the festivals that you want to keep, but that understanding completely leaves out the fact that we should be obedient to the word and how he says we should worship him. They just say, don't let anybody judge you so I can do what I want. That's satanic, but people don't recognize that. That's why when I hear that scripture being used, it's extremely irritating and provoking. And that leads me to what I want to talk about. Because with these people and many others, there's a major understanding that they have not been taught. In fact, it is a major understanding that it seems that most people in our faith have not grasped. And it's actually one of the most important doctrines to have and understand. As we close out this year on this Gregorian calendar and move into the volatile times of 2024, it is important that everyone who claims to be a follower of Yahusha the Messiah, it is important that you have this understanding and you make it a main part of your faith, your life, your relationship with Yah. You make it who you are going forward. The understanding is that you are not here to do your own will. You are here to submit to the will of Yah. Let's begin. Okay, so this understanding, while it seems to be elementary and uh, give me like, yeah, of course, this is what we're supposed to do. It actually is a major understanding that is lost in the main religion of Christianity. You see, Christianity is a religion that claims a faith in Yahusha, but then they have a bunch of thoughts and traditions of men that they have made that they use to justify a lawless application to the word. It's why there are so many different denominations. Everyone has a belief in justification that supports why they do what they do, regardless of what the Bible actually says. They can celebrate whatever they want, do whatever they want, live however they want, as long as they go to church, pay their tithes, and believe in Jesus. Maybe that's an oversimplification, but it's close. They love Yah, but they don't actually know Him. How they have learned of Him comes from religion and tradition. And the truth is that unless these ways are broken, they will always be lost and out of line with him. I speak of this because I was very much a part of this until I went to seek him for myself through his word. Understand, through religion, we have learned a very false doctrine that takes humility to discern and correct. You have to be humble enough to recognize that maybe there's some things that you misunderstand. This false doctrine, it goes along with the action of going to church every Sunday. You know how many people are different on Sunday mornings than any other day of the week? On that ride to church in your church clothes, you're a different person. You listen to different music on the way there. You go to church and pray and cheer on the pastor. But as soon as that service is done, you put back on your hip hop and get it popping again like you feel you did your service for the week. At least you made the effort to go to church and give God his time. I know that's not everyone, but it is a lot, especially the people of my generation. This is done because Sunday mornings are what the Christian church have designated to be Yah's time. Sunday morning worship. And this is what needs to be understood and exposed from this. The unspoken doctrine that needs to be analyzed is that these people have decided when they want Yah in their life and they decide when they don't need him. They decide what parts of their life they want to give him, what other parts of their life they feel don't concern him or that he's not useful when you place him there. 
because his will often doesn't match with those other goals they have for their life. Unfortunately, this is what our faith and religion looks like in these modern days. When we decide when and how we want Yah in our lives, we are not actually true followers of him. It is an overreaching problem that most people have today, whether they want to admit it or not. Yes, you believe in Yahusha. You believe in the Bible. You have accepted him and call yourself saved. Yeah, you see the evil in the world, but you're not as bad as others. You at least won't go as far as some of the other people you know, and you try to share this with them when you can. And that makes you feel good about yourself and your faith. Well, you hold your faith up in regards to other people that you know that say that they believe in him, you definitely, in your opinion, show more faith than them. And this measurement that you're using justifies the strength of your faith. You're basing it off of other people and how you look to other people. You tell yourself, no one's perfect. Everyone are sinners, so no one could judge your faith, right? And the truth is that you have to live in this world. You have to survive. You need to make money and to live. And Jesus doesn't always fit with how you have to engage in this world. Or some of the goals you have are so important that after you obtain them, you'll be better able to put our Savior better into your life. Because you have goals. You have priorities. And of course, God knows this. You're still a good person. This is sadly what the rationalization of many people are today. They love our Father and believe in our Savior but they also have different rationales in this world that they must justify in order for them to obtain their goals and see their desires. It's a big reason why people today they hear about the wickedness of Christmas don't truly want to understand what is being said and brought up. They love Christmas. They love buying gifts. They love the Christmas songs. They love the beauty of the Christmas trees. They love Christmas dinners. This holiday season is something that they enjoy for their lives that they don't want to live without. And this feeling is what they do not want to have to deal with if they truly consider the warnings against Christmas. If they have to actually consider it, then it messes up the feeling that they have when they're celebrating. This is because Christmas is all about them. They choose what part of Yah's doctrine they want to submit to and what they want to understand and make a part of their lives. People are choosing the parts of their life that they want to give to Yah and the parts that they cannot give him yet. Most people today have fell for the doctrine of Satanism, and they are not aware. There is an extreme love on themselves that they have put before the love of the Most High. It was prophesied that it will be like this. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. That's found in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1-5. through It says in the last days men will be lovers of themselves, they'll be proud, they'll be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying its power. This is obviously not a good thing, because in the end we're commanded to turn away from such people. You see, this is able to be because while many were taught the gospel and it has been presented to them, and they say they accept it, they actually have not learned the most important parts of our faith. What people are taught in Christianity is lawlessness, but acceptance of Jesus. They are taught to love Yah with their mouths, but keep their hearts from him. And it is this action that you're going to see as you see everyone claiming a love for Jesus as they deck the halls and put their gifts under the Christmas trees. If you claim a belief in Yahuwah, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you claim to be saved by the blood of Yahusha, the Messiah, you cannot live the way that you want to. You cannot put yourself first. You cannot make your life about your goals and your will. You cannot live to please yourself. When the faith was taught to you, there was an important point that was never shared with you that you must now know. You might have heard it before, but the real application of it has never been explained to you and it needs to be. Have you ever heard of the Ten Commandments? That's a trick question, of course you have. I hope. 
You know, in regards to the commandments, the most debated commandment is the fourth one, honoring the Sabbath day, keeping it holy, meaning set apart. And let's be clear that this commandment has not gone away. Keep the Sabbath day holy, set apart. Honor the Sabbath day. But there's a commandment that is glossed over and it really should not be. It's the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. That's Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. You see, most people read this command and they say, well, I don't break this. I reject all of those other gods. I reject Allah. I reject Buddha or Brahma. Or maybe you're watching this and you think like, oh, <laughs> he's against Santa Claus. And that's what he's trying to say. Because I celebrate Christmas, I'm celebrating Santa Claus. But that's just not true. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Or he's probably saying I worship pagan gods and I'm a pagan because I celebrate Christmas. I know where he's going. I heard all of this before. Let me tell you who might be thinking that. You're wrong. It has nothing to do with all those other false gods, but they're a part of that too. But what I'm talking about has nothing to do with this. Let me tell you what has been hidden from everyone. The devil has been subtly over the generations leading the masses to break this first commandment unknowingly by teaching a doctrine that seems like it's just a way of life and a proper way to live in this world. Do you know what the devil has taught everyone? He's taught everyone that they must put themselves first, to put their wants and their needs over everything else to get what they desire out of this world. This is the actual doctrine of America. I say this often. Satanism is not just about the worship of Satan. It's about the worship of yourself. Most people in this world today do not recognize that their lives are daily examples of breaking the first commandment because they don't recognize that they have made themselves a God. Our God is what is most superior in our life. The God in our life is what we focus on serving and pleasing the most. And what will surprise many Christians on Judgment Day is that though they declare themselves to be believers in Yahuwah, the God of the Bible, and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, their lives was actually the complete opposite of this declaration. Because the most important part of their lives that they served was themselves. Everything was about their will, their own goals, and their own desires, and their belief in Yah was merely including him into their life, besides what it should be, which is making him and his will their life. Most people break the first commandment of having other gods before Yahuwah because they unknowingly have accepted a doctrine of self that has placed themselves before our Creator. That's the doctrine of Satanism when you make yourself the priority. And so when you do that, in order to serve ourselves, we tend to learn to justify and make excuses for the things that we do and accept in our life that goes against the scriptures and the faith that we claim. For instance, in regards to Christmas, we know that there is no record of the time of birth of Messiah. We know that it is never told of us to celebrate his birth and how to do it. We know we have been warned many times against following and practicing traditions of men. At the basic, most level understanding of this, there is no getting around any of that. None of us know the date Messiah was born. But because the world has declared December 25th, and it is also a time in this world that seems to be happy and joyous, and people love the feeling, they want to feel like, how could celebrating Christmas ever be wrong? I mean, the world, if you actually think about it, they even made a character that shows that people who are against Christmas are a Grinch. They're evil. I want you to think, do you think that if this day was always met with anger or hostile energy, it was always a rainy day, always nasty, if there was no gifts, no decorations, no songs and carols, but it was only just about saying happy birthday to Yahusha, do you honestly believe that the world would wake up together and say happy birthday to the Messiah that they do not completely believe in and worship? Absolutely not. It's because Satan has wrapped his day up in a beautiful bow. He has given everyone the day off of work, practically shutting down the country and the world on this day, playing beautiful songs, everyone happy bearing gifts. He has allowed this day to be a day of joy for the world. Anyone that celebrates this day should ask themselves, why would Satan allow a day that is about the birth of Messiah that was sent to defeat him, why would he allow this day to be a day of joy for the world? Why would he create that atmosphere and promote it? 
the thing that people that celebrate this holiday need to understand, or at least come to terms with, is that they are not celebrating this day in regards to the worship of our Messiah. It's a nice try, and maybe it's a good deflection for those not looking too deep. But this celebration of Christmas is all about themselves. It's all about that Christmas spirit, which truly is a spirit. It's all about the gifts and the trees, the feeling of Christmas. It's why they start the season off with that song. It's the most wonderful time of the year. In a world that hates our Messiah and has done practically everything to reduce him and his influence. Do you really think that these Satanists actually will promote songs about the time of the birth of our Messiah being the most wonderful time of the year? Really? If you really think that, then you really need to go back and understand your faith. You think Satan would create Santa and let other people find a way to attach to the energy of celebrating the birth of Messiah? Absolutely not. What most people need to come to terms with and understand is that to most, the celebration of Christmas is about ourselves and the fun we have during this time. I mean, for me personally, I would love Christmas if it was not tied to false satanic worship. The fun of giving gifts, the decorations, the fun everyone has. The fact that everyone is nice to each other as long as you're not taking their item at the store. Then they'll fight you. But other than that, it's a great time. And if it was not tied to religion, it would be fun. It would be great. But it is very much the opposite. And people that celebrate it do so and do not want to hear about the other issues because they are serving themselves. The truth that you must hear is simple. For everyone that truly cares about being aligned with our creator. In everything that we do, we must ask and consider, how does our father get the glory from it? And the answer to this, it can never be how people do it today. It can never be how we want to justify and rationalize things based upon our own way of thinking. But it should always be about what he has said and what he has proclaimed in his word. This is really what our lives should be about. Instead of hearing it from me, let me show you in another way. When Yahusha, our Messiah, told the disciples how to pray, how did he start? Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 10, he says, In this manner, therefore pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Before we come to him, we first praise his name and then explain that we submit to his purpose and his will. His kingdom come, his will be done. If you're a believer, this should be your mission statement to do the will of our father in heaven. In John chapter five, verse 30, he says, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will but the will of the Father who sent me. It's all about the will of Yahuwah. Do you know what Yahusha said to the Jews that desired to kill him? Yahusha answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from Elohim or whether I speak on my own authority. He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory. But he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. That's John chapter 7, verses 16 through 18. If you're truly about serving our Father, you must do his will. You must serve him the way he desires. You can't just do what you want. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of Yah is. That's Ephesians chapter five, verses 15 through 17. And you see, if you're not doing that, you are not actually following the faith that you say you are that's found in this book. You see, the problem that most of us have is most of us don't have a clue what our father's will is. We're trapped in religion and our religion has watered it down where there's so many different doctrines and beliefs that truly people, they don't have a clue. They just follow religion. And this is truly the state of our world. 
And if you're just waking up to this, you're going to have to ask yourself why. I have said all this to make this point that I'm about to say right now. Many of us have grown up under Christianity. We have been well churched. We have been exposed to many doctrines of the church. We have been exposed to many traditions of the church. We have been exposed to many hypocrisies of the church as well. We have seen the abundance of confusion and we know there are many lies. And through the midst of all that, there is a dangerous doctrine that still holds that tells people that none of that matters. Because the most important thing is that if you accept Jesus as your savior, in the end, you will not be judged for these little confusions and matters of debate. Let me tell you something. You are completely wrong. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Let me ask you, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. For the focus on this conversation, let's skip a lot of those other characteristics and focus on an extremely important one that most people just gloss over. Let's focus on idolatry. An idolater is someone who puts other things in priority over Yahuwah. It's not just somebody that just has idols. It goes back to what was prophesied in the last days. Men being lovers of themselves. Why was that listed as being a bad thing? It's because of idolatry. Understand, most people today, though they have been Christians all their life and been going to church all their life, many of them are huge idolaters. They put themselves before Yah in most situations and then later choose to include him in their lives when it's most convenient for them. They do not submit to his will. Most of them don't even know what his will is. They have never taken the time to know or understand it. They apply their own understanding and base their life on what they were taught by man and less by what the Bible actually says. They are idolaters and they don't even recognize it. As we move forward, today, from now on, you must make sure you are not one of these people. Do not put anyone or anything above the Most High. He is our priority, and He is who we are to live for. Living for Him and by His standards is our goal. This is what our goal should be. It's not about what I say or your pastor says or what is the most common accepted doctrine that matters. None of that matters. The only thing that matters is what He says. And he has given us his word so we can understand and know. We are told, trust in Yahuwah with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. That's Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6. And if you're expecting to be a part of his kingdom, you need to take yourself off that pedestal that you place yourself on and truly recognize that there are areas of your life that you're not giving to Yah, and these areas will be a reason why you will not inherit his kingdom. Christmas, it really is an easy topic to discern if you actually try to understand. He has not told us anything about the date of his birth. He has not given us a command to celebrate it. Based on his word, we wouldn't even know what that would look like to him. So everything that is done today is something that comes from our own understanding. Those who choose to worship him in this way take a huge risk. And be clear, just because you do not celebrate this wicked day does not mean you're not guilty as well. It just means that you have at least started the process in your life to remove idols and put Yah and his will first in your life. Even if that means things you have been doing and accepting your whole life needs to be removed. Christmas and removing this day in practice is one of the biggest first steps that many of us take in submitting to Yah and his will. I find it to be a great way of actually starting the true relationship with Yah. Because you're actually knowingly stopping something you've been doing all your life in order to be better aligned with him. And nothing says I love him more than taking yourself out of the equation and looking to please him. This right here is a process that we must engage in until 
we find ourselves more aligned to Yah's will and we can properly identify it based upon the word and less by religion. You see, religion is a whole bunch of people who like to tell you what the word says without actually reading it or following it themselves. They have all these rules and traditions that they have deemed important, while what our father has deemed important, they reject. You must not live your life in this manner. You must not serve him in this way. Your life must be dedicated to the will of our father. Your life must be dedicated to serving him the way he desires and submitting to his will. You must desire to make him happy and you must desire to dwell in his righteousness. Your rationalizations or your views about what you think is good or bad does not matter to him. If you truly love him, you serve him and live for him according to his ways and his standards. Please understand, you will never find it in the Bible, Israel, deciding what is good or bad for them and then Yah just accepting what they decided. The relationship was simple. He led them, he directed their ways, he gave them rules, his laws, his statutes, and they were commanded to obey him. They were blessed when they did, and they were cursed when they did not. That's the relationship. Just because we live in this modern world, it does not change this. In fact, it means that we must be more diligent in our desire to serve him because the world is so much more complex and deceptive. Please know, this world is set to be judged. And if you believe that you can just make up and justify what you feel is proper in your service to Yah, then that's your choice, that's your decision. Just know you have made a decision to stand before him on this. You decided to stand before Yah on Judgment Day and say, I've decided what I think is best in my way of worshiping you. Rather than seeking out what you said to do, I decided what I thought would be best. This is what you're declaring. If you're willing to take that risk, then go ahead. But it would serve you well to denounce your participation with all this wickedness and stop justifying your rebellion just because you found gray areas that you think you can use in a debate with man. You see, for the most of you, it's all about a debate. You think you can debate this with other people like me and you got points and you think that this is all about a debate. But at the end of the day, when you stand before Yah, ain't, there ain't going to be no debate. It's only going to be about, did you serve me the way I asked? Did you align yourself to what I've said? I've given you my word. I've told you to feed on it. What did you do with it? Nothing should come before Yah. Our ways must be aligned to what he has declared. Our hearts must be turned to him and his will must be our life. Today, it is very easy to see what it looks like when people do not truly submit to Yah, but they put other things before him. As you see these examples, they are not to be used for a topic of debate or for an example of how not to be. This will not be the last Christmas, but it may be the last one for many of you. If you think that celebrating this wicked day is what the Most High desires you do, you do this at your own risk. Again, I recommend that you put away your pride and the love of yourself and you recognize how you are worshiping Yahusha on the same day that Satan has declared is the birth of his reborn son God. That's not a coincidence. Our Father never told you the day of Messiah's birth. He never told you that he wanted you to celebrate this day. You are attaching yourselves to traditions that are not about serving our Father. If this day was dark and it did not have the energy of giving gifts and songs, if it did not come with happiness by the world, it would be easier for you to reject. Always understand what the goal of the devil is. He wants to be worshipped as the Most High in the same way. So when you see a time that the world is celebrating altogether and it's actually religious, Everyone in the world is saying that they're celebrating a God. You must know that this is not Yahuwah. This is not about our Savior, Yahusha. The world hates him. They will not celebrate him. You must deal with and come to terms with the fact that you have been deceived by Satan to worship him and reject Yah. All because you're all about serving yourself and enjoying yourself. You're looking for that same feeling that you've had every year with your family. You want to dress your kids up. You want to make the house pretty. You want to do all those things because you're serving yourself. This is all about you. And you need to deal with that. You have put your wants and your needs first. And you will be held accountable for this. But not if you repent and change and turn from this. I put this video out about a week in advance because I ask that as you have more time before Christmas begins, 
you truly pray about this and ask yourself how you are actually following the word. I want you to think about this. If you read the word by yourself and you lived in a cave without anyone else's influence, would you know to celebrate Christmas? The answer is completely no. Somebody created this day and created the traditions. All you're doing is following them and hoping, you're hoping it actually comes from our father. You are wrong. It comes from Satan because Satan desires the worship of this world. A father is very clear about his worship and how he wants it done. And if you don't know that, you don't know enough about him and you need to change that now. Do not celebrate this coming Christmas holiday. And past that, in your life, do not put yourself above the will of the Most High. Put down your idols and submit to Yah today. You cannot say that you have not been told. And this is before you even watch this video. Make the right and most important decision of your life today and be what our Father truly desires from those who say they love Him. Today is the day Yahuwah has made. We will praise Him every day and live our lives for Him every day. Do not let Satan steer you into rebellion and idolatry that deceives you into worshiping Him while rejecting Yah. Please pray about this and repent. And whatever you do, put down your idols. Even if your biggest idol is yourself. Put it down. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Okay. Thanks again for watching, everyone. If this video has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it. Please share this with anyone that you know that is celebrating Christmas. Watch this with them and have a discussion with them. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Y'all willing, I upload every Friday. Also, please don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I would like to give a special thank you to those who have donated and contributed to this ministry. Please know that your contribution and support are a huge blessing to this ministry. I truly thank you for your support. Thank you for your obedience to Yahweh's call on your heart. I'm humbled by your support and I'm very thankful for you. You know who you are. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. I love you all.